Hi, it's Renee Bird, and I am here with another incredible guest. I'm absolutely inspired and I'm in awe um, to introduce you to Lieutenant Patrick Passy, LVO. How amazing. Um, he's going to tell you or tell us what that actually stands for, and it's incredible. How are you, Patrick? It's so lovely. I'm to great. I'm fine. Thank you very much indeed. I'm very um, pleased to be on your show. Thank you so much um, for having Thanks so much for coming on my show and sharing your story. As you know, guys, the Who Am I talk is literally that. We want to find out who somebody is. Everyone's got a story. And some stories are incredible. Some stories are quite, the journey can be so long and people don't really understand what's behind individuals. You see the end result a lot of the time, but you don't see the journey. So I I've created this in order for people to share how they started and what their future holds. So Patrick, so lovely to speak to you. And just want to find out first how you are. I think in this season, that's the first question I ask. How are you doing? It's been really... Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm doing fine. I said, under, under lockdown, you know, I sort of conduct most of my activities via Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, so I, you know, I do, you know, because a lot of, a lot of, still on a lot of bodies um, in terms of either the quality or the legal services. And, and um, so I sort of help out. And stuff. So it hasn't really affected me too much. Um, because you know, uh, you know, I'm a director of of um, a few companies and stuff, so you know, we, I've just been able to do it all on Zoom. And to be honest, <laughs> it gave me a, a rest. You know, it's given me a rest. You know, of, of you know, I've been up and down doing things all the time, but it's actually been it's allowed me to to, to rest and to, to you know, be a bit at uh, ease for, for a while. I never really stopped. You know, yeah. uh, all my life, and then this is the first time I've stopped. And yeah. it's, it's given me a time, a chance to reflect as well. So it's, it's, been, it's been quite useful in that sense. That's good. And your name, Lieutenant, we had a little chat just before the show, but talk to the audience. What does that mean, Lieutenant? Yeah, well, I, so I was lucky enough as so when I'm to provide services, I was a trustee and the director of the Prince's Trust, a special advisor as well for the Prince's Trust for, you know, for nearly two decades, you know, and uh, I was, you know, working for them and uh, I, I got really good opportunities to, to, you know, to introduce diversity to the trustee board of, you know, of the Prince Trust being the first sort of, um, you know, black person on the board. And, um, and then also was able to oversee and you know, collaborate with people at the trust to, to bring in people that like we were able to bring Jay-Z to to um to perform at the Earl's Court with the Prince's Trust and got a chance to meet and introduce him to Prince Charles and stuff. So it was even though it was great. And then for um you know after all my my uh my time after real service service they um they decided to to give me a Queen's honour, which I didn't know anything about. So it so it was a great surprise and and so they've given me um, an honour um, which uh, it says I'm a Lieutenant of the Royal Victorian Order, and, it, and it's on a, it's on the the higher on a hierarchy of knighthood. It can so you can it says it's like if, you know if I was get, get like a could be a commander next, mm -hmm. and then yeah. then you could be a knight. You know so mm -hmm. since I was still on that, but it's 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 from the, the royal family, from the gift of the royal family. So you know we get little people get the normal Queen's Honours list. But this one is from the royal family itself, so it's very nice. Although people don't understand it, so, <laughs> so they, they, when they say I say lieutenant, they think I'm in the army. So. <laughs> yeah, because that's the first thing. I'll be honest with you. But it's only yeah. from his perspective. It makes sense, and I think it's incredible. Yeah. And obviously that you've got this award. There's so much more to you. And tell me yeah. about your story. I understand you have Jamaican heritage. So how did it all start? Yeah, when, when yeah, yeah. so I said that me and my. Um, my parents were Jamaican, so they're proud of being a Jamaican. Um, you know, it, my parents are Jamaican immigrants. They were, they were from, you know, Portland in, in Jamaica. And, uh, you know, they came over here in the early, early 60s. And, um, and then, you know, I, mean, I was born here in 1965 and uh, grew up in London. And, uh, you, know, you, know, my, you know, my parents, my dad was a labourer, yes. You know, you know, I said like he, you know, worked so very hard. I'm so very proud of him. Okay. Only just last week, I posted 
um, um, thing with my father of, you know, one time when he, you know, I was, I was in a park, you know, of a Lord of Common, and uh, uh, I was picked on by bigger girls, eight-year-olds as well, and, the, and we had a fight and I beat him up. And then <laughs> he's, uh, he went off and got, got a gang of, you know, of, of his, his big brother was the leader of the local motorbike gang, and he came and swung me around and beat me up, and then, I remember I went going, walking home with all my friends behind me, my little eight-year-old friends behind me, to my dad. My, when I told my dad, he just left his dinner, came down, and there was like a big motorbike gang in the, in the, you know, in the, in the, in the park, and you know, about six of them all on their bikes. Thinking, what is he going to do? And my dad just walked right in the middle of them, grabbed them, and just like grabbed the guy, the, the main guy, and just took him off the, 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 the bike, and then dragged him across the road to the guy like a the front garden hedge, and then he just kept pushing him inside and outside the edge. And then he said, yeah, I'm bigger than you, innit? I'm bigger than you, innit? That's it's right. not nice, is it? You're bigger than him. So right. don't, it's not nice, is it? And he, oh, he just wow. like, he just, and he, so he didn't hit him or anything, but yeah, by pulling him in and outside of the edge. <laughs> uh, the, humiliating, know, isn't it? Quite humiliating. He, he got, you know, the guy got, you know, grazed and stuff and like that, and he made him, he groveled in front of me and said, but he would never do anything again. And then, oh, so, and then he, he did, and then he, he put, and then the rest of them, they were just frightened, the rest of the boat by gang, they just ran off, you know? And uh, and then my, my, uh, <laughs> my, uh, it, my dad, the good thing is about it, he never mentioned it again. He just went home, never mentioned it, never said anything. And, uh, you know, never, not to, even to me, never talked about, I remember the time I did that or anything like that. And then the next day when I was at school, all my friends were saying, oh God, your dad, he went and he took on the gang and whatever, it was just, it was just amazing. But I always loved my dad and honor my dad because he was always protective, never got a chance to have a great education, but he provided for all of us and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I'll always remember that about my Dad, for West Indian principles, you know, they'll, you know, don't pick on somebody who's bigger than you, oh. who's smaller than you, you know, Just pick on somebody your own size. And, 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 and it's a proud moment with my my dad. And I just, you know, I love my mum and dad and looked after them until the, uh, they passed away in the 80s, but they lived with me and stuff like that. So it was, that was great honour for me to be able to pay them back a bit. Of course. And that's a beautiful thing. You know, family's very important, even more prevalent yeah. season I think in this season we've all got closer and I really want that to maintain over the years I don't want us to forget the unification that's occurred in this season and I think people have looked at what their life entails and what really matters is your friends your family your health that's it yeah. you've got that you've got nothing so that's beautiful that you have that foundation that was set and gave you all the impetus to do all the things that you're doing now and obviously mm. someone tried to bully you when he was younger but as you got older, you became a boxer. So I'm pretty sure they were bullying you then. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, well, as a, tell me that story. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, as I said, I was I was lucky enough to, to go to the same primary school as Frank Bruno. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and it, it was it's quite funny, strange because you know when when I was um, I you know had a, 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 I was lucky enough to go to the same to Frank Bruno and went to the same boxing club, which okay. was down the down the road in Earthfield in yeah. Wandsworth. And uh, in London, and then yeah, we, uh, you know, would train together and whatever. And I and I remember would I would see him like running. Sometimes I st stop him on the park and say, "Hi, Frankie." He's sitting easy. He said, "Sorry, Pat, can't stop." You know. <laughs> and, and then sometimes I remember I gave him. I did a. I did like um. I asked him to do an interview for my my um, secondary school um, magazine. You know, because I was working as. Uh, as a journalist at the time, for them, a mini journalist, you know, junior journalist, and then and then he and he said, "I can't stop." But he was he, he, he was running backwards. Wow. <laughs> he would run backwards in order to to so I could ask him a few questions, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know. And it was just you know it was so funny. So he, he can't stop. I can't. I'm going to be world champion. I'm going to be world champion. And he kept on saying, "Everybody was saying, yeah, Frank, yeah, okay." <laughs> and eventually, of course. You know, he did, you know, so I was lucky enough to train with him. And then now we're still friends and, we're, we're, you know, we're, you know, we meet up and stuff. And, um, you know, it's, it's just, just nice to, to see somebody, you know, who, you know, dedicated his life to, 
you know, one thing and then made it, it made a you know serious impact on the world by becoming a world champion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. And mm-hmm. yourself, you made an impact. You know, you are now retired, but you had a stint in the boxing industry. So how did yes, you- it was, as I said, it was quite funny actually with me because I went to um, uh, uh, um, I became I, I started at school. Okay. So I once, as I said, like. Like Frank, I was I was involved. I became the school but national schoolboy boxing champion in 1982. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was so it was was great. So when I was 16, and then um and then when I when I was later on, when I, I became the the uh, Great Britain super heavyweight boxing champion. Oh wow, brilliant! And um you know which was great. You know, won winning the national ABA championship. And then, which was which was televised, so that was nice. And then, when I went to um, I went to Commonwealth Games as well. So, so, so I was, I was performed to Commonwealth Games. So I was, I was so funny enough. I wasn't. Uh, I was unlucky in Commonwealth Games. I, I trained a bit too much, and my weight came down. And you know, so I, I t- end, ended up losing. But yeah. it was so funny because it was when I lost. It was, it was. You know, I, I was. You know, we well, lost them just on point. It was a split decision. But when I lost, I, I was just so feeling down because I think, oh God, this is the, the, you know, the, you know, I was on television, worst moment of my life, and and I was thinking, oh my God, and then, and then people when I, they, that I'd met in New Zealand, they was, you know, they were so nice to me. They just were were so interested in me, and you know, because of the fact that I was, you know. Uh, studying law and there's also was doing the boxing and stuff and they took me on the round the world boat trip they, they, they kept, when, when they stopped in New Zealand I was there, they, they took me around all the boats and the yachts around the, around the world yacht racing and and then and, whatever, and it was so funny because it was um it was such an experience that um but it, it, I I didn't even realize that I had a lot of baggage on my shoulders that I didn't, I didn't realize I had. Yeah. And from from them, from them liking me despite the fact that I'd lost, mm. it, it just felt like a massive weight. But I didn't realize it was there. Came off my shoulders, mm-hmm. and you know, I'm in and you know, I you know, I was settled down. I had my you know, and my and my. Girlfriend later became my fiance, might have been my wife, but I did not realize how, um, in, you know, didn't realize how society can sort of put a weight on your shoulders that you don't even realize is, is here. As a black person, things that I used to, you know, to, you know, and so sometimes I like I put my lips in and stuff like that because yeah, people talk about rubber lips and stuff like that, and then, and then. But I, and and then you know you, you'd find yourself doing things like that, and, and that you just thought were normal. Yeah. And then once the very fact that everybody accepted me despite I lost, I just got that sort of love for myself. I never really thought. So I'm saying it was it was it was a worse situation for me, you know, Commonwealth Games and stuff, and then they're not performing. But at the same time, it was a it was the best experience that could ever happen to me because it been then release this weight off my shoulders that I never knew I was carrying yeah. and then began to be able to love myself as I am and and to accept myself as I am and it and that allowed me to do so many other things that I went on to do mm, and I'm so glad it people don't yeah. realize the pressure that is on yeah. you in the industry anything to do with entertainment you're constantly in the public yeah. eye and people are looking yeah. at you to see what you're going to do. And some, sadly, people are willing for you to fail. So you take that energy too. And you have so exactly. much that you said on your shoulders that you want to make sure you've done the best. But I can yeah. say to you, the fact that you t- t- took part in the Commonwealths, you lo- lost, hey, yeah. you took part, you trained, you did everything that some people couldn't even have a, any mm. energy to do. And that speaks volumes, you know, that the winning and the losing, it's a power taken, I think is important. Mm. So. I totally understand yeah. you. And then I was lucky enough, as I said, I, I, um, I, my my sparring partners, you know, I was lucky enough to eventually join the Lynx Lewis camp and stuff like that. But my sparring partner at times I was Henry Akin, one dude became a world champion, Herbie Hyde, he became a world champion and stuff like that. So I was sparring, but I, when I 
then I was lucky enough to be chosen for to be the the the, the, the sole boxer chosen for the Barcelona Olympics in 1992. Yeah, so I, and so they used me for the the boxing poster. I, I, I were, ended up I dislocated my shoulder so I couldn't go, but I was I've got a, a picture of myself in my prime yeah. <laughs> now yeah. as on on the on the as the sole boxer they used in the whole world. So it was fantastic. And so you know, and so I always have that on the Olympic boxing poster. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of immortalised, <laughs> you know, forever, so. Well, one of the icons and legends of the day, as I said, boxing has taken so much different journeys, you know, you could, I can, yeah. I don't know if you can name drop, but you must have met everybody in the boxing fraternity. Yeah. So I remember watching it as a kid, my dad used to let me stay up, which was really naughty, till late, yes. and hear that big, you know, ready to rumble. So who have you, yeah. Bruno, he's obviously like the world champion, these people that yeah. you hang out with and friends. Yeah, but as I said, yeah, we we go to you know, uh, uh, so we grew up together, same primary school, same Amazing. boxing club, and then you know, and then when they uh, when he used to box as a professional, we would go and see him at the Albert or Royal Albert Hall mm -hmm. and support him, and and then it's just so nice that when the, when he's he's got time for everybody that he, he wants you, you know, as I said, you know, and then so we you know we. When we go to like boxing dues at um, the the you know the hotel, uh, um, the Savoy yes. hotel and stuff, and we we meet up and and then take pictures and just catch up with you know, old days. You know, so it's just great, you know. And I said I was I was lucky enough to, as I said, train with the um, uh, you know some other world champions like uh, Lennox Lewis and be able to and Herbie Hyde and Spa. With them and stuff like that was was really good, and um, you know, it, the, the funny thing is, I said like with 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 that is up with but Lennox Lewis's manager mm -hmm. um, became my manager at the time. So was, what I did, I, t I took off a lot of time. I, I stopped boxing when I was twenty two, yeah. and then twenty twenty three, and then I, I then I uh, you know went off and became a law lecturer, and then and uh, you know and then. You know, for, for, when I got to about 29, I thought, oh God, maybe I should have gone to boxing. So I went back to to, to boxing, and um, I got signed up under um, Frank Maloney, who, which, who later um, was was, was a, so he later he changed sex and to to Kelly Maloney. So we, you know, he you know became so he was on the um, you know one of those uh, those. Uh, celebrity shows mm. um you know where you know as i said he, he, but you know he was my my boxing manager alongside with Lennox lewis so that you know i might didn't have a a, a very successful um uh, boxing career so you know i again again with the managers sometimes you know they you know i won my fight but then somebody else lost and he wanted to cut my wages mm. and you know it was it was it was so eventually, actually, um, we, we end up falling out. And, yeah. That's what yeah. happens in this industry. People don't realise the business side is, they can be very yeah. strong, you know, and you've got to yeah. your eye on the ball, as they say, because yeah. where you can make your money is based yeah. on business and they're quite shrewd and, you know, it's an underground yeah. world of the boxing industry, isn't it? And, then, and when, when I will try to assert myself, this isn't law, Pat, this is boxing. Yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, so many you see so many big, clever people get taken advantage of, like Muhammad Ali and stuff, and then you realise, you know, but you know, you know, it, it's uh, you know, even though you you know you're even though you know you're right, and I did, where we they can say I can okay, I'll pay you the money, and he's, but I can't tell you when you're next gonna fight. And, you know, it was that sort of thing. Do they they can mess you up? They would not not fixing you up for a fight so so yeah so, but it was it was a good learning experience of life it was and you know you spoke about then doing your went to do your law, law degree your doctorate so that's phenomenal yeah. you then said right alongside your boxing I'm going to learn this so you know what happened what was the transition what did you when did you complete that and yeah, well, it, was, it was great as I said like you know some of my students one of my students um, you know, I used to teach on the University of London external law degree um, at, 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 a, at, a, at a, you know, uh, Barnet College. And then one of my students, um, Anne Hemming, she won the 
the highest prize, but the, you know, the highest mark in the UK and Ireland won the Blackstone Prize mm-hmm. for the you know the best marks and stuff. And and then um, my students, well, because I teach students to be lawyers, Chartered Institute of Legal Executive Lawyers, and uh, you know one of my they, all of my students passed, and so I got put in the was it the Voice newspaper, a New Nation mm-hmm. newspaper as um. Uh, uh, as a Mr. Hundred Percent, because all all of my students passed, and that was really. But I was more pleased for my students, as you know, in terms of them, you know, m- mainly being, you know, from you know, cosmopolitan backgrounds, ethnic minorities, uh, being successful and um, and succeeding in life, and you know, you know, lucky enough to have the great great students that were able to. To you know, take all the, the stuff that I gave them and use it efficiently and pass their exams. But I was so made me feel so proud of them. And then they're always in touch with me now and they're making me feel, you know, you know, make, make me feel appreciated, which is nice. And that's a phenomenal. As I said, you it's very it's a very important thing when you are in industry to make sure you're giving back. I think that's in general, but even more so when you're in the public eye and you've got and proven that. And obviously you're um, work with the Prince's Trust. I mean, you want to talk to me about that? That's phenomenal. That is helping kids from disadvantaged backgrounds and giving them opportunities mm. to better themselves. So that's been your theme throughout your life, really. So yeah, well, as, as I said, it, and it's been so satisfying because, as I said, like I mean, you know, I guess uh, what it was is I, I, I've been my one of one of my mentors is my um, bishop um, at my church, yeah. and she used to work with the you know with the Brixton riots and stuff she was involved in okay. you know trying to inc- improve the relationship between the police and the yeah and the, and the community in Brixton yeah. and, and and so I I was looked up to her and then she you know you know would guide me into the right spaces into networking and, and then how, how to do community projects for your for your community mm-hmm. and uh as a result, I got chosen to be a, um, a, a commissioner for racial equality. Okay. Yeah, so, but a Home Secretary Jack Straw yep. back at the time, back in the day. So, you know, they they she chose me to be uh, a commissioner for racial equality, and and then I was I was there by helping people with the uh, with their cases. So we like did we did a murder investigation in Belton Prison. Where an, an Asian guy was, you know, killed by um, his Caucasian cellmate, and um, you know, they they shouldn't. There was rumours at the time that there would there was gambling between uh, the prison guards as to who could beat up who and stuff like that, and, and, the, and that they may have been um, put in the cell with him for the wrong reasons because he was a he was a clear um, racist and should not have been put in the same cell. And then, and he was on his last day as well, the Asian chap. Um, but um, Zahid Mubarak, his name was, and uh, and on his last night before he was about to be released, um, he uh, they, they, he took a, a piece of wood from under his bed and then and then murdered the. The Asian cap and then put his blood all over the wall with racist insignia and stuff like that. I mean, and it really could have been avoided. So we did an investigation into all the prison system in the UK and then and tried to make sure that this sort of things didn't happen again. And it was through working with the with, with the com- commission for racial equality as a commissioner, but I um, uh, met up. With um, Prince Charles at an event, and uh, and then and then he, he he asked me to be to be a special advisor, and then after I did a few some work with them, they they allowed me to be a, a trustee and a director of the Prince's Trust, which you know was the first black person on the board, which was great. You must have, yeah. I when it comes to board representation, it's still lacking. You know, we're getting yeah. there, but. You know, you, you speak about the racial commission and, you know, last year was was a, a volcano, is the best way to describe it, of what was happening in the world. It enabled us to stop and think about certain inadequacies and, and diversity and 
all sorts of things and it was very very hard hitting um mm. my question to you is do you feel we've come far i think yeah, you know, I, I, what do you think is, is yeah, I, yeah I, I, as i said I, I was i worked in i as i said we, as being a part of the commission raise equality with my background in sport i was on i was signed up by onto the board of sport england Oh, wow. and, and, and and then the football association Excellent. and did so many different things so i got to work with the you know uh, you know to deal with racism kick racism kick racism out of football and my chair at the um at the commission for racial equality was lord herman and who's these became a lord yeah. um and, um, and and so you know he was used to work uh, he was the head of the kick racism out of football and and all the things that we've seen, like we've just seen that Raheem Sterling, um, <laughs> you know, you know, doing all, you know, his stuff for England, That's and right. you know, it was so difficult at the time. There was many black people that were, you know, allowed in, you know, into to, to, to football and stuff and getting given opportunities. You know, I remember when I was growing up, it was there was a black footballer called Clyde Best, and he was the only one <laughs> that I could, you know, I could that I could recall. And then so if I didn't have stamina, they'd have excuses and stuff. And it was just so good when you see um, the, 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 the amount of, you know, um, uh, mixed heritage um, and uh, black people in the in England football team now as well. It just show, it, that to me shows we definitely made progress in certain areas and how we celebrate them. I mean, when I was a when I was a young man going to football matches and I was a Chelsea supporter um, and uh, and, you know, it was um, it was just amazing that you know we'd be we'd be threatened and chased by our own fans you know right. you know when we would yeah. get yeah chase so we have to we have to we chase out of ourselves sometimes we'd be racist abuse and then we would be at more threat sometimes by our own fans when i've gone to when i went to chelsea when i was well, just 10 and i had to run okay. and stuff and then, and then again but the, the, the difference and the change that is made now this year again chelsea won the champions league and so many of the the the, the, um, the players. players are of definitely minority black, um, a mixed heritage person, and the Chelsea theme song is the Liquidator. And you think, wow. Wow. How the world has changed oh, yeah. um, in in relation to you know that was the most racist club, one of the most racist clubs out there, and then, and now they're they're embracing it as their theme anthem, you know the you know you know a, 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 a tune with you know West Indian heritage, you know yeah. it was that West Indian you know anthem. It's just so the world has changed, okay. things have gone better. I look on TV advertising. Um, and and you know, if I see so many um, mixed heritage people and, and, and black people on advertisements yeah. every day when I look on the television, yeah. and I think, so I, I, I do feel, I feel, yes, I, I, I know I was campaigning for those things and some of them has happened and, and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased, as, as I said, I know that the work we've done in the community, you know, it's made a difference. Yes. You know, now, now we know we, we're not, you know, back in my days, you oh, look, there's a black person on television. Oh, no, no. <laughs> but, <laughs> but now yeah. it's, you know, every advertisement, you see every other advertisement, there's somebody of, of colour in there. And I'm, so I, I feel like, again, I, I was allowed to contribute. And remember that, you know, you're talking about where well, that was back in 1999. Yes, between 1999 and 2003, when I worked as a commission for racial equality, and but it's taken all that time. We're now 2021, but but it's but at least I can see the change. Yeah. Yes, okay. that we've contributed to. Yeah, and I've, wor I've worked with. I was I'll be lucky enough to work with um, a friend of mine. You may get a chance to meet or even interview him if you if you desire. An, an Asian guy called Bobby Said, who started the Emma Awards. And um, and then, and then we, we honoured honoured um, Nelson Mandela, oh, so we yeah. had an award, and Nelson Mandela came down to London. We met him at Chevrolet Square and stuff, and we were able to present an award to Nelson Mandela for all the things that he done. And Bobby, so so, and I'm, 
So as I said, the things that um, you know that, uh, that I was able to do um, and um, work with other organisations in trying to fight for for racial equality and diversity mm-hmm. is you know. A, Although we, at the time, it didn't always work out back then, or it didn't seem like it was working. Now, when I look mm-hmm. at modern day Britain, and then I look at the, at the world, the world, I, I, I realise that I feel I've been able to contribute, yes, you, you know, to something which has progressed. Yes. You know, in terms of, you know, it's got better. Yes, I like that. You're completely right. It's as I said, I remember the phone would ring if someone was on TV like a game show or an advert. Now I can turn on the TV and see a representation of myself or my peers. Um, And it's important, you know, the stain, there is still residue to be fixed because I've seen like footage when you speak about football where they're booing on one hand and cheering on the other. And I'm like, guys, which side your decision, you know? And I think it's in built on, it's it's lack of understanding and ignorance. A lot of people don't understand. So it's really hard to wane out the bigots, as they say, it's gonna take time. But as you yeah. see, we are now seeing change. And I think we just need to keep, as I say, keep the feet on the pedals to keep yeah. pushing forward for it so we don't go back. Because it's very it's easy sure. to happen. It's sure. like, as you say, society has changed. Everyone is so interconnected. There are relationships yeah. into racial and all sorts happening, which is enabling yeah. people to have understanding. I think it's lack of understanding. A lot of people, even when we think about the Windrush scandal that happened and still happening. Yeah people didn't even know why we came and what the story was behind it. And when you start looking at that, you start thinking, hold on, we've came here by, interju- you know, by yeah. invitation and done a lot of work. We have yeah. all the rights to be here and all the things we've done to uphold the, the country. So a lot of people just don't know. And that's why you see that racism and that prejudice because it's lack of exactly. I mean, I was lucky enough to work with Doreen Lawrence and Neville Lawrence mm-hmm. um, on the, when I worked at the Commission of Racial Equality about the own Stephen Lawrence inquiry and, mm-hmm. and, and, and following all those things up. So, so I've been, and then, so, so, and so both, as you said, that those injustices are, have happened and we've seen it happen again with Deloitte, the, the George Floyd That's thing. I, I became a member of, of, of the Black Lives Matter as well. So, 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 you know, I definitely haven't given up the fight in relation to that, but, but I, I do things, bad things still do happen over here yes, and, yes. and you know but we know but we're we're still willing i mean i, I work with um, equality for black nurses as well yes. Okay, yes, yes, so yes, yes so and then we're fighting for you know proper uh, protection of ppe um and and treat treated you know not discriminated against or treated unequally in the yes. pandemic yes. so and then so we work with for the, the leader of quality for black nurses, Naomi yes. Campbell, and she, now she um, uh, is, is fighting for black black nurses to get equal treatment um, and not be discriminated at by the the NHS and stuff like that. So yeah, and then I, I help in that. So and I'm grateful for for being able to you know to give advice and help in that as well. But yeah, as I said, the, the things I've done with the Prince's Trust. Um, you know, working with people, getting people into employment, yes. um, you know, giving people a second chance, even if they've got like a previous criminal record, trying to make um, the, 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 trying to make the Prince's Trust, you know, more relevant to our to, to people by working with people like Jay-Z, Will, Will Smith and yes. stuff. We work with him as well. Yes. Um, uh, down at Earl's Court came in over, Alicia Keys yes. and you know, to, to being able to, to to bring, you know, some of these organisations, help bring some of these organisations, you know, to to embrace diversity a bit more. And I was lucky to work with leaders, you know, um, that was uh, my uh, CEO, Martina Milburn, um, who you know, really did embrace diversity and, and and made the Prince's Trust a, a wonderful thing, which has helped so many people. Uh-huh. And so, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm really, really bad. And, we've, and then we've, we've now got Prince's Trust International. So, oh, really? it's, it's, okay. so it, yeah, it goes all so, so in different countries all over the world. Mm-hmm. Um, it can, um, you just, you know, it can, it can do, do, do so much, so many great things and give people so many great opportunities to get into employment and 
despite your, you know, not maybe not to shine in your education initially, giving people a second chance, or if you've been a bit naughty and got yourself in trouble, giving you another chance then. And uh, so, and that's you know what I'm really proud of is the work that we've done there to and to help um, um, you know, our community, but the whole community. Um, you know, you know, you know, white, brown, we've been helping all everybody. So yeah. it's just been nice. Because yes, circumstances, everyone has different circumstances and they say you're, you should hopefully not let your circumstances depict your future. You can have, there is a way out. Some people need a helping hand. Mm -hmm. Some people need to change the mind and realize they're special and go for it. And I think mm -hmm. those are the thing, organizations you spoke about are doing exactly that to show mm -hmm. that there's nothing impossible, you know, and it's proven even your journey, what you've mm -hmm. achieved to date and what you continue to achieve, it shows there's nothing impossible. It's all about, you know, going for it and having the right mindset, <clears throat> being positive and connecting yeah. the dots, isn't it? Connecting with people and yeah, yeah. And as you said, it's it's a it's a it's a skill networking whereby mm. you know you, if you do go and you work and you give people, you know, give the most to people, then sometimes people will refer you on to to, to other things. So I got, you know, I used to work in the I was representing the UK um in the in the EU for you know for five five years you know so mm -hmm. i was on the you know uh, on the you know european you know community so what was it again i forgot what it was it was a, a consultative commission for industrial change yeah? oh wow yeah so on the european um community for you know and i was able, i was there again just the just sole black person but mm -hmm. able to <clears throat> to to um you know to help people from you know help people to um to embrace of course the, and input yeah. different different things that we could talk about with, with civil society groups from all over Europe mm -hmm. um and uh, we're being being able to um to to talk to them about things and and then sometimes you think it don't do anything like well I was able to talk about reparations Yes, um, and to them, and you know, you know, how we should get reparation, and, and most of them, if you talk, a lot of these European powers that were involved in Africa, again, it's you know, you think you're just you know wasting the time, and then I do, you don't know, you don't know, because like, was it four weeks ago, Germany, you know, paid out, you know, say they're going to pay out over the next thirty years, not perfect again, still, but one billion pounds in reparations for what they've done in Namibia and stuff like that, you know. And so, as I said, is some talking to people, even though sometimes you're thinking you're not getting through. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's a step by step thing, mm -hmm. and then sometimes get through. So again, it'd be lovely if the, in Britain they paid reparations and turned in terms of helping, um, you know, communities maybe to go back. To, to, to visit yeah. Africa to know where, where they come from is yeah. when I did I did a recent poem for Black Lives Matter and it was called like I'm I am an African and yeah. and then and I said and I said like and you know you know, but, oh, I get on with everybody I get on with everybody but I, I, one of the lines was named after a white man from a head to toe you know being named Patrick Pesley yes yeah. yes um you know but you know but uh, and, but still realizing that I've got an African soul, I've got an African, my African heritage, but uh, I'm being grateful for some of the opportunities that, that I've been given and, and, and to, I'm working in this country, but, but, but it just giving them an opportunity to, to see that it would be a nice thing to say sorry. That's correct. By, you, know, you know, the Jews, they got reparations That's for the the, the bad things that German did, Germany did to them, mm -hmm. and um, so well, yeah, and the Indians in yeah. um, in America has been recognised. So that's just that's the other other areas that I'm still working on, but mm -hmm. I have been working on for thirty years, talking to people about and um, and influences. And, and as you said, you never know some of the people, of the civil society groups, in the German representative in the the, on the, the committee that I was on. I don't know whether or not that's said in the pit, but all I do know is that 20 years later, they decided to, to put a one billion pound. Somebody say it's too little money. I stopped and I, and I can agree on that, you know, but, but 
at least is something. Something's been started. And, yeah. You know, progress has been made at least. Um, no, there's a generation of people, um, yeah. young people below us, below myself. They're just not having it. <laughs> so I think they're really pushing even harder and they're actually are not even aware of what was going on. You know, when you think of socials and the social media, the way the world is opened up, how everything is so interconnected, you mm. can't hide anymore from your thoughts, from certain atrocities that occur and mm. information is there to be read and to be seen. So I think a lot of people now know the truth and they're trying to say, okay, guys, everyone deserves fairness. There's got to be a diverse spread, as you said, of everything. So we deserve more than ever if we've built most of the world and being very instrumental in what it, what you see, why not? And not we're not giving something back to make us better. And even more so for some of the kids <clears throat> because of their situation of not being given the opportunities that other people would have from a different demographic. Mm -hmm. Why not give them the chance so they can get, as I say, a level playing field. And that's what I want to see. Yeah. You know, I mean, as I said, and, and as I, I try and give back now, so I'm director of Harangay Law Centre, and so you know we, you know, you know, help people housing problems, welfare benefit stuff, you know, help them to to get a leg up, you know, yeah. and you know, you know, especially up in Harangay used to be Tottenham Law Centres now covers a wide area in Harangay, we've been there, and um, one of my when I was vice chair. Um, of, of the of the committee, my my men, one of my mentors, Martha, um, she, um, she, um, you know, she was a um, uh, she was a chair, and she she's now she's been honoured with a, a, a baroness. She's now baroness of summer. That's yes, amazing. she got honoured with a baron baroness by um, I think she was a, a, a a long time colleague of Jeremy Corbyn, yes, okay, working yes. In, the, in, in the Labour Party, and and then she's she's been running the law, ran in the law centre for so many years, mm -hmm. and you um, know Harringay, and you know, uh, years and years of commitment is so nice that you see where sometimes it can be re rewarded by you know her being made a, a baroness, and and her, her daughter, I mean, of course. Yeah, Kate Osama. She's a she was an MP um, for for Edmonton. Yes, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I used to live in Edmonton. She was a the MP for for Edmonton. So it was you got a black mother and daughter from you know, uh, and uh, they're, 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 they're both in the Houses of Parliament at the same time. And she I think she got made international um, um, international. Um, uh, uh, secretary as yeah. well, you know, uh, Kate or someone when mm -hmm. she was as a shadow mm -hmm. uh, working for the, sh the shadow uh, uh, government for the for the Labour Party as well. So yes, it's it's wonderful that uh, people can achieve, um, help their community, and then and then do such thing where you got a, a black mother and a black daughter in the House mm -hmm. of Parliament at, sh at the same time. That's which is which is which is wonderful, and and then you know that it was all through helping other people, and then for most time not getting any money for it as well, yeah. just doing it out of the goodness of their heart, you know, and for, and then and then we and then she was rewarded, which was which was great. I went to a, I was lucky enough to go to a a, a party that they had okay. when she got made a baroness or summer, mm -hmm. and it was just just wonderful to see that. You know, uh, people can be rewarded, and all the good work that she's done for many, many, many years. Um, um, you know, in her community, you know that somebody somewhere was looking, <laughs> and, and, and and she and she she was rewarded. It was wonderful. Yeah, and you know, you're you. What's so beautiful? You're speaking so highly about other people, and that says yeah. a lot about who you are as a gentleman, Patrick. Thank you. Also for yourself, you have to, you know, I can tell you to pat yourself and I can put a pat your way to say what you've done is incredible. You know, you over your Thank career you. it's always been about giving back. Um, yeah. You've used your skills, your talents, your, you know, to do the best you can and you continue to. Um, and what's your future? What What's the future? What would you like the future to look like? Well, as I said, you know, I'm, I'm working, as I said, with, you know, the equality of black nurses and, you know, and I'm saying that, you know, we're, we're 
lobbying and working with the the you know the the trade union nurses trade unions and stuff like that trying to make sure that they treat people fairly yes yeah. yeah. because their cases aren't into, dealt with fairly i also work with as well with um um you know with help to colleagues and stuff fighting with the social services whereby they're trying to take away a granddaughter yes and you know who's got um, um health you know problems and life threatening allergies and yet they're keeping her in um you know places where you're not allowed any pets and yet everybody's got pets and then and then when we try and do anything with social services you know discriminate against her and try and treat her bad and I, so you know i like being that person who can fight that's for cool. the people who are not defended that's and cool. then and then and then achieve results and so you know we and we you know she's she's you know going to be able to keep hold of her granddaughter who she's looked after for 10 years and yet they just you know they as i said it was it, it, that's the fight yeah. with just getting people to recognize that institutional racism still exists it does. Yeah. It absolutely you know, does. it's there it's there in the prison system even though i was there years ago working it's still still in, you know in the criminal justice system it's still there and it's there in the i mean if you know that in terms of the the paternity right this is another thing you it's funny you say this we i saw the whole i saw an article about that a paper yeah. about women who are in hospital black women are treated far yeah. less then you know there's deaths and so the five times with, with the death rates and maternity it's just it's just for, you know just terrible it's disgusting and then you know and then and then when black people are working you know we're you know in the areas more dangerous areas yeah. sort of put in the, the, most, the most dangerous areas it's just it's just it's just terrible and yeah. you know they're, they're, because of the underlying sim symptoms or of you know, their illnesses underlying illnesses they should be risk assessed before they're put into those jobs yeah. yes or or whilst they're in the job say well hang on you've got more of a risk and so we should move you to somewhere else but we're not doing it no they're not so so we are disproportionately being affected and dying or, or suffering severe illnesses and, and when they when you have suffered illnesses the amount of calls i've got where you know you know nurses have been told to get come back to work what, you know when they've when they've not even properly recovered from them being bullied yeah. into, into coming into work it's terrible yes it's they're not getting proper ppe nothing and then, be, and then being forced to handle stuff at the beginning of the pandemic it was terrible and it, it was again largely with an issue with you know um, ethnic minorities in yeah. in the nhs yes and then, and then we see now, you know, which which applies to everybody as well, you know. But you know, despite you know, um, you know, I, I met and worked with the, one of the, the the nurses from New Zealand who um, helped save the Prime Minister Boris Johnson's life. Yeah? yeah, yeah. And yet, everybody came out clapping. Everybody came at him, saying, "Well, we're grateful to them." And yet, they give him a one percent pay rise. Yes. And then inflation is going to be two point odd percent. It's just I said it's actually a pay cut. And it's just 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 wrong, it's a farce, you know? isn't it? It's, 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 it's a, a smokescreen, you know. When you think of us clapping, we was clapping outside for the NHS. Yeah. Let's not clap. Let's give them more yeah. money and let's give them a That's pay. Right. That's more of a clap, yeah. isn't it? It's just. Right. And then they, they risk their lives and stuff. Yeah. Work so many hours. If some I mean, so many people I know get burnt out. Yeah, they would. You know? As as I said, like you know, and you know, as, as I said, but again, as I said, this and that's why again, it's it's a, it's a so it's a bit like a class war as well, you know. Absolutely. Still, still a bit like a class war as well in terms of working class people or people who, you know, they're, well, and then they can't even say that really because because it, again, it's it's. There's a doctors and stuff who would be deemed to be middle class, Thank and you. then they're still being treated badly. But it's just sometimes people don't really fully appreciate people, no, and don't. then and then um, that's why that's why I enjoy being able to help people. Whether it's you know, ethnic minorities have been taken advantage of, discriminated against, or you know, 
working class people or or, <laughs> or, or to stop wrongdoing. That's why I think That's I'm here. For, yeah. Yeah? And then obviously I do have some areas where they, I, I put as a priority, like helping my community mm -hmm. and, and the like, but, but, the, but just stopping wrongdoing, it's wrong. It's wrong, we know. It's wrong to say we're grateful for you. We'll come out every Thursday and clap for you, and then say you either you risk your life from all this one percent, which yeah. is a yeah. when it, when the inflation's gone up two percent. In the meantime, it's just wow. Well, it's disrespectful, is the word, isn't it? And yes, that's that's exactly how it is. that's this completely disrespectful. Yeah, sure, you know. And then I'm and I'm against that. And then I'm but I, so I'll I will stand up on thing well, but I'm whether you know I'm, I'm being paid or not as a volunteer, I will try and help those types of good causes because it's because it's, as you said, it's just so disrespectful and and in, you know, in genuine, you know what I mean? Yeah, it is. It is, and <clears throat> people have really taken for granted the people from the NHS, the key workers. I mean, the list goes yeah. on. And at this time, when we became unwell, we were looked after, you know, and they were. Yeah. They were overrun as a burnt out, but yet at the end of it, they still weren't given the money to say thank you, just a clap, and that's just not it. <laughs> it's, no, <laughs> it's just it's outrageous. <laughs> if you really stop and think about it, and yeah, no one actually outrageous. stopped and thought about that at the time, they yeah. just did it. But if you stop and thought about it, yes, we are yeah. giving them recognition and acknowledgement, but acknowledge them yeah. financially, acknowledge them with all the things to protect them. That's what you do, you know. Yeah. It's just not. Yeah. It is happening so much, but as I said, people's eyes are opening. There's a term called woke. People are now yes. more woke than they've ever been, and then just not having it. And people like yourself yeah. standing up, speaking. You know, one of the most the best inventions that they ever had was something like this, because now we can capture it live. Yes, there you go. <laughs> so whatever yeah. you say you didn't do, we can find you and we can see and, it. And, and as yeah. you said, even if even if you ain't got one of them, you've got like you know these cameras watching you, like Paul Mac. <laughs> I say Paul my ankle <laughs> the other day, <laughs> you know, I mean, as I said, you know. Catastrophe and that is just, yeah. it, it, how can you, I mean, we, we, obviously that's a whole different conversation, but you yeah. are the health minister and yeah. you are caught doing what? Okay, that's his yeah. personal thing, but you, yes. sorry, when you're in the public eye, unfortunately, yeah. you just can't, absolutely not. And it's just exactly. a catastrophe. As you, said, as you said, it's disrespectful. It's to, disrespectful. To, that's right. Just the to speaker. say you can't do this, right. you can't go to a funeral, you can't do, and then and that's the sort of stuff that in the law center, whatever I'll be, I'll be fighting for because it's wrong. It's, wrong. it's, it's wrong. disrespectful. It's wrong. It's wrong. And it's, there's no way you can justify it. Yeah. And you know, I'm just glad in the end that you know he stood, he's, he's, he's stood down. But it's just it's wrong. And I thought I, I giggled when I saw it because I've always. I'll be honest, he's not really, he's, he's never really, I've never really taken to him. He's not been my palatable thing. I just didn't, it was disingenuous, I felt. And when yes. I saw that, I thought, mm, see that I was right. Because yes. you know, a lot of people have been given a lot of respect to government, following the rules, doing the best they can, not seeing family, staying away, social distancing, the whole lot. And then you go mm. and do something like that. And you're in the mm. public eye. It's just at every level. And it just then questions everything. What you've done is made everyone uncomfortable and nerved about, the circumstance we've we've, put, we've yeah. a lot of lost their jobs people lost their lives and yeah. as i said i just believe that there's a this year and the year before is a year of revelation i think a lot of people are coming out a lot of things are coming out and you can't hide no more so yes. do things do it right because people will speak yes. out. no one's keeping quiet anymore yes and as you said you know you know that police officer the other day who killed the aston villa player yeah black aston villa player He's he was he was he was he think got eight years again. These types of things the first you know first time it's, it happens you know it never happened before. But you know at least you know it wasn't again it wasn't again a longer sentence especially with that again even with George Floyd. At least the the people have been so I'd say yes we are seeing progress yeah. yes even though it's still painful and it may not be exactly and so and that gives that gives me people like myself who fought for years. And people like my, you know, former chair Martha, who fought for years, um, you know, to, you know, to, you know, give things that, yeah, it wasn't necessarily for nothing. 
Yeah. And, then you, and then you have, we have seen progress in the world. We have. We have. We have. World. And I just feel, I just, I do believe I'm a person of faith. So I believe everything will happen when it's ready and nothing is going to be, as I say, no stone can be unturned. I believe over time, people are speaking out, people, you know, people have written books more than I've ever had in this season. People at home weren't there. So there's a lot of mm. voices. <clears throat> and the lobbying that continues is very important, like in government, get it right into the, the weeds and everything and make change that way. And over time, I hope in generations to come, you know, grandparents, grandparents, we will see a change. Things will happen. And that's all yeah. you can hold on, hold on for, isn't it? That's all you can do. For sure. I mean, and, like, what, 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 the last thing I have to say is, well, again, is that I've been lucky enough to be mentored by many women. Yes. Yes. You know, like I said, my bishop, Esme Beswick, M yeah. MBE, yeah. I was, we nominated her. She got a Queen's Honor as well. Mm -hmm. All the services, you know, but, you know, trying to, uh, you know, resolve the Brixton riots and they got making peace afterwards. And then, you know, you know, Martha, you know, Baroness Osama. And then, you know, but even now at the, 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 the law centre, working with um, my, you know, mother-in-law on the olive water she's a new chair of the of the thing and, and try and give her as much support as she can mm. and you know you know and you know just you know just 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 you know just to realize and to appreciate you know that um the, the, the role well i just wanted to the role that women played in my life in, in allowing me to do what I've, I've been able to do yes and then, and then I said, like, you know, Martina, um, you know, uh, you know, she's now Dame Martina Milberg, you know, she's uh, a white lady. Um, she, you know, gave giving me opportunity when I was at the Princess Trust and helping me to do the to do the right thing. But yes, there's a lot of so I'd like to acknowledge that because I, I also worked with um, on the the, the uh, we helped set up the. Quality and Human Rights Commission oh, wow. as well, yes. Oh. And, um, you know, I worked on Disability Rights Commission as well. And again, women uh, I've found have, have been very generous in their time you know, in order to, to help me, to, to mentor me, to, or to give me, the, give me the best advice. So I've been, so I'm very grateful um, to, to women. And so that again, like you, I'm grateful to you Thank for giving you. me the chance to do so and I appreciate I do appreciate you and all the women who've okay. been in my life who have been able to help me yeah, and, 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 and anything that I could do for them I would do I will do as well that's amazing thank you you're very welcome you've done fantastic you. you continue to and how can people connect with you and your causes what where would the best place have you got a website yeah, as I'm saying as I said I'm um like we, we always need you know extra help and stuff for, and people can volunteer at um at having it where I'm a director or director at having a law centre mm -hmm. and you know even though you know I think you know we're operating by zoom at the moment yeah. um yes you know but to, you know people still got you know, I think whereby you can maybe recommend people who are in the area of Haringey um to come to us so that we can help you know with their with their housing problems with the welfare benefits problems any you know issues that they've got that we can we can help them with nice. and, and we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be able to so you know we'd lo i'd love to be able to help more people yeah. yes and uh yes yeah, so that would be nice if i if you could help me to help more people then Definitely. i'll be happy <laughs> yeah so that's wonderful and it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the who am i talk because so much we covered you know equality your boxing yeah. career all the things you've done for the princess trust i want to encourage my listeners that you can give back you know the small can give back. Matter, don't they and then you can and as you said you can involve your own people you can reach out to america and um, and bring in diversity from will smith and jay-z and, and then and, you know you, it, it can work okay. yes you can reach out we can we can over here like we did with Bob, reach out and then get Nelson Mandela to come over here. Yes, That's yes. Great. And then he come and accept an award and be recognised and reach out and then say, again, to say thank you to those people 
you know, he's Nelson's gone now, but he, one of the thing, species he said, he said, Nelson Mandela, he said, he said, I'll thank you. When he said, I said, one day I'll be gone, he said. Mm -hmm. And he said, and I want, and I'll be able to, I just want to thank you, Hubert, to appreciate you. And the fact that he was appreciated, he acknowledged it there on, on video, and it, we've yeah. got that now as a, as a, as a, his testimony that he was appreciated by people all over the world. Yeah. So, so we can do things for other people, and at the same time, at the same time, do for some other people and to help the world, help the world. Yeah? yeah. So, and then, yeah, and maybe you can progress yourself, but as you said, to help the world. And it's so nice if there's people like Mandela, um, you know, um, you know, we, we, Lawrence, you know, Fishburne, all those people, we can recognize them for their achievements and stuff and make them feel appreciated. Definitely, yeah. definitely, Patrick. No, I feel you're passionate about your causes and what your journey is, and you know, you're a walking angel. There's loads of people that are doing yes. something for somebody, and yes. I feel that you can't really function unless it's giving out, giving back, giving mm -hmm. to others. And, you know, I yeah. know God will be looking down and he will keep blessing yeah. you on your journey. Because there was one thing, last thing, when, I mean, when Jay-Z had to introduce him to, to, to Prince Charles, mm -hmm. he was saying, he said, oh, he said, so because this was before Obama, <laughs> and he was saying, oh, he said, he's so great. He said, in our time, on our child, we don't get a chance to meet our leaders. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. yeah. And so, so he came over, performed for us at um, yeah, at the Earl's Court before the Prince's Trust and, and what a performance it was. Brought over his friends, Alicia Keys, then Will Smith came over the next year. It was fantastic. And he was saying, we know, he was grateful that we don't get a chance to speak to and meet our leaders. We know Obama changed that eventually. But it was, was back then, it was very important and be able to bring Jay-Z to to, 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 to our beneficiaries at the Prince's Trust, show that we think they're important. That's that was great. Yeah, that must have been great too. No, it's incredible. And as I said, the Prince's Trust is still doing incredible things. And yes. young people and young yes. people listening as well, reach out if there's something. Yes, yes. So as I said, if you do the Prince's Trust, again, get involved. It's so, it's so easy. Just Google them and then sign up yourself, volunteers of them. And if, if they can help you, they'll help you. Definitely. So it's, and it's just so great. We see so many people have, have put their into business from our community. They're running their own businesses now. And yeah, it's just it's just grateful. But oh, years later, uh, you know, they're there and then and they, they'll thank you. And they said, you know, it's not necessarily money, but no. but, 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 but just feels feels so good inside, knowing that you helped. Yeah. And, you know, your own people. And, and then being appreciated for it by getting the Queen's on or, or whatever as well. It, was, it makes me feel appreciated as well for my hard work. Yeah, well, Lieutenant Patrick Paisley, that's a great name. Um, that's you. a testament to all the work that you've put in over the years and continue to put in. And I'd like to thank you on behalf of the team and the Who Am I Talks. Yes. Thank you for having for joining me today as a guest. Thank you again. As I said, I appreciate you and now another woman in my life that's helped. Thank you very much. You need to get my message across. God bless you. God bless you too. Thank you. Thank you very much.